When your child asks for your permission to go out and play with his mates, you expect them to be safe out there. The last thing you could expect is for them to never come back home alive again. This was the reality of Stephen Mwendo and his wife Felista Wayua. Their 12-year-old son, Junior Mutuku Musioki, went to play football on the 7th of July 2021 and never came back home in the evening. In the week that followed, a man linked to his kidnapping was found and arrested. That was the 20-year-old Mustin Milimo Wanjala. The world was not ready for the shocking discovery that was about to be made. Welcome or welcome back to the Instant Edition. My name is Yusuf, and on today's episode of Criminal Diaries, I'm going to tell you the bizarre story of Mustin Wanjala, the Kenyan serial killer who tortured young children and drank their blood before killing them. He is also Africa's youngest serial killer. On the 7th of July 2021, Junior Mutuku Musioki went out to play football with his fellow young club members. They played till 7pm and dispersed to their respective homes. While the other kids were going home, Musioki went for a short call and never made it back home afterward. His mother, Felista Wayua, grew tired of waiting for him and decided to go out and get her son from the pitch. That was at 11 p.m. When she missed him there, she went to the home of their football coach to find him, but sadly, he wasn't there either. The coach told her that maybe her son might have gone and spent the night at one of his teammates' home, so she should hopefully wait till morning and see if he will come back. On the day that followed, just like the first one, Musioki never came home. His mother called his father and informed him about the situation at home. The father, Stephen Muendo, came home without hesitations and together they continued with the search and also went and filed a missing persons report at the police station. Around the same time, someone started to call them and demand 50,000 shillings ransom in exchange for their 12-year-old son. The person threatened that if his demands were not met, he would kill their son or sell him to Tanzania, a neighboring country to Kenya. The father continued to report everything to the police, who in turn assured him that they will find his son and arrest the perpetrators. On a particular day, Stephen asked the kidnapper to give the phone to his son, Junior Musioki, so that he will ensure that he is still alive and not hurt. Surprisingly, the kidnapper told him to first send 5,000 shillings. Since at the time the parents could not raise that amount, the kidnapper cut all communications with them there and then. On the 13th of July 2021, the kidnapper's phone was tracked by the police and afterward they arrested Mustin Milimo Anjala from his hideout. After a day in custody at Shaurimoyo police station, Mustin Wanjala admitted to the crimes and also agreed to take the police to the places where he had disposed of the bodies of his victims. At the site in Lower Kabete, the bodies of Junior Mutuku Musioki and another boy were found. A simple observation of the body of Junior Musioki showed that he had just been killed a few days that had passed. There were injuries on his stomach and armpits, which were the signs of possible torture. The other body which was already decomposing, had gorged out eyes, and the tongue had come out fully. The body was identified to be that of 13-year-old Charles Opindo Bala, a boy who had disappeared on the 30th of June 2021. Marcin Wajala also confessed to having killed 11 more children in cold blood across Nairobi, Machakos, Bungoma, and Kajiado. The exercise to visit the places where he had dumped the bodies began, and two more bodies were found. One of the bodies was identified to be that of Brian Omondi. The other body could not be identified since it had severely decomposed. When asked why he committed the murders, Mustin Wanjala blamed demons and evil spirits. He said that he never wanted to harm or end the lives of anyone, but at the time when he was committing the murders, he wasn't in control of himself. What's sad about this case is Mustin Wanjala knew most of his victims well since he was their football coach. He will easily lure them into following him 
and that will be their end. Marston Milimo Wanjala was the first child of Robert Wanjala and Edna Nabalayo. To his father, he was the last born. His parents separated before he was born, so the mother left with him in her womb and was remarried in Machakos County. Marston met his biological father for the first time when he was 18 years old. His father took him to a local primary school. Surprisingly, Marston Wanjala only attended the school for just one term, then he disappeared. Marston Wanjala developed his urge to kill when he was just 14 years old. Purity Maweu was his first victim at Machakos in 2015. He kidnapped the 12-year-old girl and killed her later on. Her lifeless body was discovered a day later. In the years that followed, Martin Wanjala continued with his killing spree and at the time of his arrest in 2021, he had killed 13 children in cold blood. Of the 13 children, 5 were from Nairobi, 2 from Machakos, 4 from Bungoma and 2 were from Kajiado. As we had mentioned earlier, Martin Wanjala was arrested on the 13th of July 2021 after the police tracked down his phone while they were investigating the kidnapping case of the 12-year-old Junior Mutoku Musioki. Wanjala admitted to the crimes and also took the police to the places where he had dumped the bodies of his victims. Martin Wanjala was first arraigned in court on the 18th of July 2021. The Makadara court granted police 30 days to continue with their investigation. Wanjala was thereby detained at Buruburu police station and later remanded at Jogorod police station. Martin Wanjala escaped from police custody on the 13th of October 2021. He was to appear at the Makadara law court on the same day where he was to take a plea for the 13 counts of murder that he had been charged with. The news of his escape sent shock and panic throughout the whole nation of Kenya. Most people started to question the justice system of Kenya. The most raised question was how a self-confessed child serial killer could just escape from a heavily guarded police station, and to make the matters worse, there were no signs of breakage anywhere. On the 15th of October 2021, news spread everywhere that Martin Wanjala, the self-confessed serial killer, had been beaten up to death by a mob in his hometown of Bungoma. Police were called to the scene and they confirmed that the man on the ground was indeed Martin Wanjala. After his death, more questions were raised. How did Martin Wanjala escape a heavily guarded police station and travel almost 400 kilometers away? unnoticed. The case of Martin Wanjala was classified as open and shut. And since dead men tell no stories, we will never really know why things happened the way they did.